Well, hi everybody. It's finally here at long last. I am ecstatic. This is my Daystar Quark, the Chromosphere model that I ordered <clears throat> over a month ago, maybe a month and a half ago. So I decided to do some solar imaging this summer and I have a PST, but I wanted more. Uh, so I decided to convert my old F7.5 ED80 into a solar scope. And so I wanted to get the uh, Daystar Quark to, in order to do that. I've got a couple other goodies here as well. I actually ordered a, a, a new camera, a ASI-178, but that still hasn't arrived. But I'll try to do some imaging with one of my old auto-guiding cameras. Let's open this box up, see what we got. Okay, we've got the, uh, here's the Quark. I'll take it out of its little container. They really pack it pretty well. It's very impressive. For the hair. And so there's the cork. That's that echelon filter. Let's get us little glasses. That side, that side, that side. What else do they give you? They give you all these little various plugs. And this is the only one we really care about. These other ones are for different countries and whatnot. And this one looks like the one for America, so maybe I'll keep this one out. Put the rest away. Put all this stuff away. And what else did I get for this thing? Well, I actually purchased the uh, Bader UV IR. Uh, uh, filter. I got one of these things. Uh, they recommend it. If you read the manual, they said below 80 millimeter scopes, you know, you can just put this thing up and go for it. And then they recommend anything 80 millimeter or above it, you should use one of these filters in front of the cork. And actually in front of the diagonal so you don't melt it it gets very hot so I purchased uh, one of these things and actually Chuck uh, recommended uh, this he didn't have it at first and then he said he put one of these on here and he, he got a lot more uh, detail so I just went ahead and purchased it so I'm gonna stick this in front of that diagonal so I got the two inch model I could have gotten the one and a quarter and stuck it on the front of the cork but I just went ahead and got the two inch model. So, and then what happens is you just take your, and just stick that right into here and away you go. And then what you do is you just stick your, your cork. Your cork is a one and a quarter inch So your cork, you can actually, uh, well, it's actually one and a quarter or it's a uh, two inch, I guess, the way it looks. So I can stick that right into here as well. Yep, goes all the way down, no problem. So I guess that's how I would do it. I haven't done this yet, so we'll, we'll see. This is my uh, thing. Uh, what else did I get? I got one other thing. And this is actually, and I, I'm really not gonna use this yet. This is actually, a 0.5 focal reducer. This quark, it's got a built-in 4.3 Barlow lens. And the reason is, is because this works best if your F ratio is between F15 and F30. This quark is designed for to use the scopes that are F4 to F9 and with that focal reducer, it makes it so it's a, the proper F15 to F30. So that's pretty a, a pretty narrow field of view. So what you can do with your camera, if you're doing some imaging, uh, I'm going to put this uh, 0.5 focal reducer uh, on after the cork. Uh, that's what they recommend. It was in the manual. So we'll see if it works out uh, well. Okay, let me go connect this up to my scope in, uh, in, in my shed, and we'll see what it looks like. 
Okay, let's do the old switch. This is my PST that I've been using. First thing I'm going to do is take my camera that I've been using with the PST. This is my auto, old auto guiding camera. And let's put this aside. Hopefully I'll get a chance to test this out today. And we'll put a little cap on it. And we'll put the my new my old new old whatever poor old ED80, which has been really depressed lately because it's been sitting here collecting dust, not doing anything, and it really wants to be out imaging and observing. So now we're gonna put it back to use. Let's check out the balance. So anyways, that's uh, pretty much it for now until I get this thing connected up. Oh, by the way, this thing takes power, the cork. It, it doesn't just work like right now. You gotta plug it in. So there's a little uh, plug on the other side of this as well as a dial right here. And apparently from what I read, you just plug it in and it takes anywhere from five to 15 minutes. Uh, there's a green light that'll appear you guys can't see it, it's on the other side. There's a green light that appears, and then it's ready to, to, to go, to use. So we'll try that out. If you're in the field and you don't have power, there's a, there's a battery pack that you can buy for this thing, and I think it's like 100 bucks, of course. So, <laughs> But um, I'm doing it here in, in my shed, so I don't really uh, need to worry about the battery pack, at least for now. Anyways, hopefully you'll see me see the results uh, pretty soon. Howdy folks, I've got everything set up, it's on the sun. I'll show you around my little solar setup in a few minutes, but right now I've got the best solar flare I've ever seen in my life live. It, this, this thing works awesome. I wish I could show it to you. Um, incredible view. Uh, what I'll try to do is I'll try to hook it up to my, my auto guiding camera. As I said, my camera that I ordered for this setup hasn't arrived yet, and I don't know when it, when I'll get everybody, see if I can, I can do something with this. Well, here's my whole setup on the from the outside. You can see I got a tarp over the roof part that's open, so that's where my that's where my little setup is. So I'm not sitting in direct sunlight. I'll walk in and show you this. Actually, let me walk over here and I'll show you how I have it attached. I have some bungee cables. And I put a little nail up at the top right there, a uh, screw, so it can be nice and tight. And now we'll go in and take a look at this thing. So here's my scope. This is my homemade solar finder. It's actually, for those of you that are into, uh, there's the dot. For those of you that are trying to guess what it is, it's actually a plastic and electrical outlet. And here's the cork. Here's that little dial I think you have to adjust. I tried turning it, and now I'm just waiting another 15 minutes to see if it does anything with the contrast. And here's the setup. Here's the computer. And it looks like we're in a cloud now, so it's actually a good time to look in here. And yeah, so I just pull this thing nice and tight. And uh, so I'm sitting in the sun. I'm not sitting in the sunlight with this thing. But still, I think I might get a uh, another an electronic focuser for this um, uh, for my <clears throat> moonlight focuser of some sort. Okay, well here we go. I'm gonna turn this off now. Yeah, once you know it, as soon as I get it, this thing hooked to the camera on, the cl clouds are out. But uh, here it is, my first ever vision of the view of the sun. Let me see if I can do something with the focusing here. Ah, ah, there goes the sun. I'm going to put you on pause here, see if I can get it before. Well, 
All right, I'm back, and here's that solar flare that I'm talking about, but it looks really cool in the eyepiece. I don't know if I can focus in any better than this. I, I'm not good at adjusting sharp cap yet or any of that stuff, so I don't know. And plus, I'm using this doinky auto-guiding camera there, so I'm not sure how, what I can do with all this. All a learning experience. And then there's a dial on this, um, on this chromos, this cork chromosphere that I'm not really sure what it means. It looks like it says every time you uh, adjust the uh, dial, it gives it. Uh, you have to wait another five to fifteen minutes for it to cool off. But we'll see. I, I, I like I said, I'm just playing with it right now. Let me go out of zoom here. Uh, let me see if I, uh, well, let's see if I. There is a brightness in gamma control. I don't know what that does. Yeah, that does that. Yeah, brightness does that. But, um, contrast, see what that does. Okay. That does that. Okay. Well, let's see. Let's go back to this. You know, like I said, I don't know what I should be doing with this thing here right now. I'm playing around with the... Oops. I mean, I think I got it in focus, but it's... I don't know. Maybe some, some of you whizzes out there with solar uh, imaging can tell me what the hell I'm doing wrong here. Oh, yeah, that did it. Well, now it's back where it was. It doesn't look too bad, though. All things considering, I guess. I don't know. Like I said, I, I'm i new at this. So I think that's focused as best as I can get it. So, anyways. Should I turn that dial? I better not. I better read the directions before I find out what's going on here. Let me turn down the... Uh, Well, let's leave that alone for now. Maybe I'll just go do some visual observing. All right. Well, cool. Anyways, but um, anyways, I I think I'm pretty happy with it so far. The, the visually, it was awesome. I just got to learn how to take images with this thing. Okay. Well, we'll see you in a bit. solar camera to be a, to be I actually ordered 